so we're in this like rich you know abundant economy and yet the people are not really displaying that rich abundant beauty they're really displaying a, a very high level of sickness right so that's happening simultaneously you know karmically speaking or energetically speaking we've got upon our shoulders the reality that we're buying things from Africa, from China, from Central America, with paper that we're just printing. And on top of that, we're actually giving them a very low amount of it. So say, for example, we buy you know, cacao from Africa. We buy it for 10 cents on the dollar, and then we sell it at 10 times that here in the United States, or there in America. And so 90% of that profit, where does that go? It goes to whoever owns that corporation. And so what that means is, is that, you know, the people actually of the United States, and so let's get back to the quality of life that we have here. Well, I've been to Africa. I've been to India. And yeah, the people work real hard. And yeah, they have almost nothing. But for the most part, they all have enough food. For the most part, they actually have more free time than working Americans do. They actually have a lot less stress. They're definitely healthier. You know, of course, there's a lot of, you know, sickly, there's a lot of sickly Africans and Indians as well, but there's also a lot of healthy ones. And very commonly speaking, they are generally happy. They're generally pretty happy. They've got close communities. You know, they, they're friends with their neighbors. They've got close-knit family. You know, they see their family on a daily basis, you know, every day. Um, many aspects of their quality of life is actually superior. Many of their qualities of life could be considered inferior, but many of their qualities of life are actually superior. And so when you actually look at the United States, okay, so yeah, we might be able to go to the refrigerator, you know, and just pull out all this food, you know, that's just there, it's already ready, it's in a package, you know, you don't have to do anything, you just eat it. But when you look at the quality of life, most Americans don't really have disposable income. Most Americans are in debt. They're in debt. They're in debt. Student loan debt, medical debt, you know, mortgage, car payment debt, you know, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of debt. Debt is actually the standard because again, we're, we have a fiat currency where it's all, all it is is debt anyway. So even if you had $20,000 US dollars fiat currency in the bank, it's still just $20,000 of debt. And people are working real hard. They're working every day, stressed, 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 and still most people still don't have, you know, raw, fresh, organic food. Most people are buying cheap food. Most people are trying to buy the cheap food because they don't have enough money to buy the expensive food. I know a lot of people that are like, oh yeah, I'd love to eat local, or I'd love to eat organic, or you know, I'd love to eat this, I'd love to eat that, but it's too expensive, I can't afford that. You know, so even in the United States, the land of the free and the land of the wealthy, even still people can't afford their food. And they don't even own their own houses. I mean, that's one thing that's really nice about you know, a lot of the other poor countries is that these people, you know, are on their piece of land and they're, they're, very, they're very secure and guaranteed in their land because they don't have these mortgages, they don't have these debts. They've been on their land for generations and, you know, they've got it, they've got their food, they've got their livelihood. You know, the people in America are very, very, very dependent upon the system, upon the grid. You know, the heating, the electricity, the water, the food, it all comes from the system. So if you're in a city, for example, if, you know, if the economy were to collapse, if there were some huge natural disaster, and we've seen it before, like in New Orleans, in Houston, right? We've seen it before when a natural disaster hits. How long does it take before all the water is gone in a grocery store, before all the batteries are gone? How long does it take before the food is gone off the shelves? Most cities have two weeks max worth of food reserves. And 99.9% .9 of people in cities do not have a garden. 
They don't have a greenhouse. They don't have chickens. They don't have pigs. They don't have fruit trees. They don't have any way to get food. So all of that food, you have food for two weeks maximum in that city with no way to get it. All right, so that's extremely dependent. That's not even considering the water or the electricity. All right, so it's a very precarious, very precarious state. And the only way you can get it even is with money. All right, so these other countries, they've been living without it for so long that they are fully capable of living without it. They may not have it, but they also don't need it. Which is a really amazing thing. So, I want to get into a few, a few details about how this is very practically affecting our day-to-day -day life. And the way this is very practically affecting our day-to-day -day life, the best and most powerful example I can think of is in the mortgage system. So, not only are these banks, you know, using a fiat currency, but as soon as you go to a bank and you want to buy a house, right? They, you know, they check your credit, blah, blah, blah. And they say, oh yeah, you know, we can approve you for this loan. And you're like, oh yeah, now I can, you know, get this, I can get this house that I've been wanting, you know, I can, you know, put my family in it, I can, you know, impress my parents, impress my friends, or finally I'll be successful, or blah, 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 for whatever reason it is, you think you want this, like, really big, totally unsustainable, completely insufficient, overpriced, you know, cardboard box. You take out this loan. Well, when they check your credit, what they're really doing is they're checking to see if you have no idea what you're doing, essentially. <laughs> yep, this person has no idea how the system works. They are totally slave to the system. As soon as they sign this, they will feel like they're obligated to pay, and you know, we'll have them by the balls forever. And that, that's what the credit report is really showing, um, is whether you pay those debts. All right, well see, here's the fact, is that when you go to that bank, and you get that loan, right? Well, number one, it's a fiat currency. So all they're doing, if they even loaned you something, is giving you debt. They're not actually giving you anything of real value. Number two is that when you sign that loan document, which is actually a promissory note, you're promising to pay. You're promising to pay. I agree, I promise to pay $400,000. You know, plus interest, you know, charges, blah, 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 you know, whatever you decide to charge me for, blah, blah, blah. Well, as soon as you do that, they make a, they make a book entry in their, in their accounting. And what everyone thinks is that what's happening is they're making an, an accounting, okay, you know, we're negative $400,000, you know, here's your $400,000, or, you know, you give it to the, the realty company, or you give it to the individual, or whoever it is you're buying the house from. So what most people think, and logically speaking, that's what makes sense, right, is you get that loan, they go into their check, their savings account, they pull out $400,000, and they give it to you, or they give it to the bank, or whoever it is, the other party, right, that's involved. Well, that's not actually what happens. What happens is, is they make a book entry, and all of a sudden, $400,000 is created in credit. They just created the credit. The credit didn't even exist. It never even existed until you signed that promissory note. Now the credit exists. Credit was created as soon as you signed that promissory note. It's not, it's, not even, it's not even backed by the paper. It's just a digit in a computer. And before it was a digit on the computer, it was a digit on a piece of paper. There's, not, there's definitely no gold, as we've already established, it's a fiat currency. But there's not even any paper. Most of the money that exists in the economy is called new money. There's no paper for it. It's called new money because it's created anew every single time someone takes out a loan. So that's a fact. This is a fact. This is what's happened. There's books you can read that tell you the Federal Reserve doesn't lie about it. They, you can go to their website 
and it'll tell you what they're doing. It's called fractional reserve banking. So that credit is created, and then that credit, which was just created by your signature, now goes to pay the bank or the you know the, whoever the third party is that is now you know releasing ownership of that of that home of that house. Right? But they didn't put up any risk. They have no investment. They have no security. They have no risk whatsoever. The credit was created by your signature. Then on top of that, so they just they created that credit. They just all they all they are is a mediator. All they're doing is providing a service. They're just a transaction service, transferring credit from one place to the next, digits from a computer to another computer, from a server to a server. And then on top of that, they now have this promissory note, of which you've just agreed to pay four hundred four hundred thousand dollars plus interest. Right, just like with what the government's doing to the Federal Reserve. Right, it's the same thing that's playing out on different scales. Right, so now they've got this promissory note of which you're bound to, which you think you're bound to, and now you've got to pay X amount of money every single month, you know, for X amount of months to pay it off. So you wind up paying four hundred thousand dollars plus whatever interest occurs based on the time. So they put up no risk. $400,000 was created. They get $400,000 plus for doing nothing except for putting digits, like sending an email. They got paid $450,000 for sending an email. On top of that, they take that promissory note and now they trade that promissory note in foreign markets. And they get paid another five to ten times the amount of that promissory note value in market trading. And they're not doing anything except for letting you fill out a piece of paper. That's it. So the whole system is set up not for your profit. I mean, if, 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 it, if it was a truly lawful, in good faith transaction, it would be really amazing. Because there is something really amazing about having no money and being able to go to somebody and them giving you enough money to buy a house or a piece of land to where you can start a lifestyle, to start a family, you know, without having to have all that up front, it's amazing because then you can be responsible and liable to pay that off over the course of 20 or 30 years. That in and of itself, there's no problem with that. It's a great idea, it's a great possibility, right? And that's why we as Americans, because most of us as Americans, we're honest. Most of us are, are, are willing to be responsible for, you know, our livelihood, for our lifestyle, right? Most of us are willing to work. Not all of us. Most of us are willing to, you know, provide for our family, right? And so if we think that, okay, well, based on my capability, based on my training, based on my skills, based on my intelligence, I can make this much money per month, well, then it makes total sense that I can do that and pay this off, and I can get this nice, huge, big house right now that it would otherwise take me 20 or 30 years to get. It's a, it's a really great deal. But the whole system is not set up in your favor. It's set up for your failure. It's set up for your failure. So number one, number one, the currency to begin with has no value. It's just paper. It's being printed, and it's putting your country in more and more debt every single day. That's number one. Number two, that credit, that credit is created by your signature. They didn't actually loan or give you anything. There was no equal consideration. Right? Now, you really need to look up contract law. You need to read a book on contract law. You need to do research, internet studies on contract law. There are certain elements that must be in place for a contract to be a bona fide contract. For a contract to be bona fide, which means lawfully standing, there must be certain elements that are in place. There has to be an offer. There has to be acceptance. There has to be good faith. There has to be full disclosure. There has to be mutual consideration. And a contract, with the, uh, that promissory note doesn't meet any of that criteria. Well, there's an offer and there's an acceptance. Other than that, it doesn't meet any of the other criteria. And so it's void. It's void ab initio. 
employed from the beginning because it never met the standards of a valid bona fide contract. 